Hey everybody, this is Jack with SpyPy Gaming. Uh, today's episode, or today's video, is going to be part one in our series for new players in the Elder Scrolls Online community. Parts of the series will, it's likely that will help players of different experience levels, not just new players. Maybe not this in episode in particular, but we're going to cover um, as much as possible. <clears throat> Anyhow, so, so Zoss has given ESO the slogan of play your way. And, and they really do mean it. Um, especially with the more recent patches, they've made changes to systems and uh, like stat boosts and gear and stuff like that that make many things more hybridized than they used to be and it makes building a hybridized build far more simpler. So, yes, there are roles in group content like tank, healer, damage dealers, you'll hear it here and see it called DPS. However, you really can play however you want. You just have to figure out what you want and how to make it work. One of the best things, in my opinion, about the experience that you get from playing ESO is that this is not a game that is where skill is based on high levels. It's not one of those games. Skills based on the skill in this game, your skill as a player in this game is based on being able to perform basic mechanics. The end game is basic mechanics under pressure, but it's still the basic mechanics. Power leveling does not always mean high skill level. In fact, it mostly doesn't. It just means more than likely that you grinded out a lot of levels. <clears throat> so, one of the biggest problems that we've encountered that new players seem to face is the abundance of things to do. ESO released eight years ago. Since then, Zoss has added a good amount of stuff to do. Now there's just so much. It seems that, honestly, it seems to be overwhelming. You have solo questing, which includes main quests and side quests. You have solo arenas. You have group content, like dungeons. and There's group arenas. You have trials, which are for larger groups. PvP, crafting, farming, um, guilds zone daily quests it just the list just goes on and on so we're gonna start from the beginning with character creation in ESO there are ten races and three factions the three factions are Evan Hart Pact, Aldemary Dominion and Daggerfall Covenant <coughs> Now, the three races in the Ebonheart Pact are Argonian, Dark Elf, and Nord. The three in the Aldemary Dominion are High Elf, Wood Elf, and Khajiit. And Daggerfall Covenant consists of Breton, Orc, and Redguard. The tenth race is Imperial, as you can see here. The tenth race is Imperial. It can be in any of the factions, but the race itself must be purchased. I know if you know anything about Elder Scrolls, if, if, if you've been exposed to this you know, franchise at all, I know. Buying a race that's just kind of part of the storyline, It's it, but it is what it is. Um, now, this, all this up here being organized the way that it is, as a quick side note, you can, there is an any race, any alliance that you can purchase um, for, like if you're playing with a friend or friends and happen to want to be a particular race that isn't in their faction, or if you just want the freedom to choose, you know, I'm Evan Harpact. I play 
a high elf. You know, that's my main. Um, so, anyway, each race has their own passive bonuses, which is sort of given in, in this description down here. <clears throat> but I'll go over the actual bonuses and try to put them up on the screen somewhere. Um, because, let's see, High Elf, for example, the racial skills of the High Elf reflect their magical affinity by increasing weapon and spell damage, resource recovery, base magicka, and experience gain. These innate bonuses help define the race as proud and powerful spellcasters. Now, you know, that kind of, that, that does tell you a vague definite, uh, it gives you a vague idea of what, you know, the race passives are, but anyhow. So, all right, we're gonna start with Nord. So, <clears throat> the passives for Nord are Reveler, which increases experience gain with two-handed skills by 15% and increases duration of any consumed ranks by 15 minutes. They also have Resist Frost, which is it is a passive that increases your max health by 1,000 and Frost Resistance by 4,620. Um, Stalwart increases max stamina by 1,500. And when you take damage, you gain five ultimate, which can occur every 10 seconds. That's a pretty good passive. And then they have Rugged, which increases your armor. Uh, in game, it says spell and physical and spell resistance, which is your armor rating. It increases your armor by 2,600. Dark Elves. They have Ash Lantern which increases experience with dual wield skill line by 15% and reduces damage taken from environmental lava by 50%. That's important in some aspects of the game. Uh, Battlegrounds, for example, which will be in a future video. Uh, <clears throat> they also have Dynamic, which is an increase of Max Magicka and Max Stamina by 1,910. And these are, the, I'm listing these maxed out. So um, they have Resist Flame, which increases your flame resistance by 4,620. And they have Ruination, which increases your weapon and spell damage by 258. And then we have Argonian. They have Amphibian, which increases experience gain with restoration staff skill line by 15% and increases swimming speed by 50%. That's another odd one. Um, I guess I can see a place for it, but it's, it's you know. Anyway, um, they have Life Mender, which is increased to healing done by 6%. Argonian Resistance increases max health by 1,000 and your disease and poison resistance by 2,310. And then they have Resourceful, which is an increase to Max Magica and Max Stamina by 1,000. When you drink a potion, you restore 3,125 health, Magica, and Stamina. So whatever the potion, like if you're using a Tri-Potion, which gives you all those resources back anyway, it'll be boosted by 3,125. And then we have, let's see here, we'll go over Breton. Breton has Opportunist, which increases experience gained with light armor skill line and increases alliance points gained by 1%. You also have, they, Bretons also have Gift of Magnus, which increases Max Magicka by 2000. They have Spell Attunement, which increases spell resistance by 2,310. And this is doubled if you are afflicted with burning, chilled, or concussed, which are magical status effects. And then it also increases, increases your magic of recovery by 130. And then they have their last passive is Magicka Mastery, which reduces the magicka cost of your abilities by 7%.
Red Guard has Wayfarer, which is an increase to experience gain with one hand and shield skill line by 15%, and an increase to the duration of any eaten food by 15 minutes. Martial Training reduces the cost of your weapon abilities by 8%, reduces the effectiveness of snares applied to you by 15%. Then they have conditioning, which increases max stamina by 2,000, and adrenaline rush. Throwback. Adrenaline rush. When you deal damage, you restore 1,005 magic. Or sorry, 1,005 stamina, and that can occur every five seconds. <clears throat> then we have orc. Their passives are craftsman, which is an increase. An experience gain with the heavy armor skill line by 15% and increases crafting inspiration gained by 10%, which is effectively experience when it comes to crafting. Then they also have Brawny, which increases max stamina by 1000. They have Unflinching Rage, which is an increase of max health by 1000. And when deal damage you heal for 2125 health and that can occur every four seconds they also their last passive is swift warrior which is an increase of weapon and spell damage of 258 it reduces the cost of sprint by 12 percent and increases the movement speed bonus of sprint by 10 percent those are pretty good passives and you have High Elf. They have Highborn, which increases experience gain with the Destruction, sta destruction sca Staff, if I can talk, skill line by 15%, and an increase your experience gained by 1%. Then they have Spell Recharge. When you activate an ability, you restore 625 Magicka or Stamina based on whichever is lowest. This, can, uh, this effect can occur every six seconds, and when you're using an ability with a channel or cast time, you take 5% less damage. <clears throat> Which is, that's pretty good. Um, they also have Cerebane's Boon, which increases Max Magicka by 2000, and Elemental Talent, which is an increase to weapon and spell damage of 258. And then we have the Wood Elf. This is, I'm not even gonna say. So Wood Elves have Acrobat, which is an increase to experience gain with the bow skill line by 15% and just decreases fall damage taken by 10%, which is actually, that's it's really not that bad, the fall damage. They have Hunter's Eye, which increases stealth detection radius by 3 meters, increases movement speed by 5%, and physical and spell penetration by 950. And then they have, I'm going to, I'm going to slaughter this word, Efreeze Endurance. Increases stamina recovery by 258. And then they have Resist Affliction, which is in, increases max stamina by 2,000 and disease and poison resistance by 2,310. And then we have the Khajiit. Their passives are Cut Purse, which is an increase and experience gained with with the medium armor skill line by 15% and increases chance to successfully pickpocket by 5%. They also have robustness, increases health recovery by 100 and stamina and magic of recovery by 85. That's pretty good. You know, it's a, you know, flat flat increase across the board to recovery. Uh, lunar blessings increases max health Magicka and Stamina by 915. It's not quite as high, but it is an increase to all of all of your resource pools. And then there's Feline Ambush, which is incre an increase to crit critical damage and critical healing by 12%, and it decreases your detection radius and stealth by 3 meters. <clears throat> and then finally... Imperial. They have Diplomat, which increases experience gain with one hand and shield. 
by 15% and increases gold gained by 1%. They also have tough, which is an increase to max health by 2000. They have imperial metal increase to max stamina by 2000 and red diamond, which is a reduce to the cost of all abilities by 6%. Those are, you know, it, there's some mixed opinion about whether or not imperial has its place in certain roles, but those are some really good passives. So, anyhow, as you can see, all of these races have certain points that stand out, which leads them to be preferred choices for certain playstyles. Like, you know, for example, high elves have an increase in damage, a baseline increase in damage. So it leads to this race being preferred <clears throat> in a damage dealer role. N nothing about any of that though actually means that you're boxed in to being a race with damage bonuses. If you want to be a damage dealer, there's ways to go around compensating for a slight deficiency in one area. 258 damage, baseline damage is not hard to make up. Breton, for example, will help you with sustaining your resources if you decide you want a primarily magicka based playstyle. The same goes for Red Guard if you choose a stamina, heavy route, some balance both, like Khajiit and Dark Elf. When it comes to picking a race, it's about your preference. Which if you're new to the game, I understand you probably, you know, you likely don't have a good grasp on exactly what it is you want to do yet. Uh, my suggestion in that is if you're not sure if you want to be like a melee or stamina based build or magic a build like if you're you know up in the air in between pick a race that balances both um, or it gives you you know just pick a race that balances both like some good races to, to you know to go with are because you because it's it's a balance across the board dark elf is a balance across the board um, if you do have an idea and you're new to the game if you do have an idea that you want to be a magic based uh, you know, play style, then Breton, you know, is a good choice for the stamina recovery. Red guard, or sorry, for magic recovery. Red guard, if you if you think you want to, you know, be up close and personal in like a melee style combat, um, red guard's good for that because of stamina recovery. Orcs got some incoming healing just from doing damage, you know, and it doesn't matter how much damage you do. Imperial is a good one due to, you know, re reduced uh, skill cost, uh, you know, and as I said before, yeah, you do have to buy the, buy the race, but anyhow, um, I currently don't have a necromancer and I'm thinking I have an idea for one based on what I've been looking into. So I'm actually gonna go with Dark Elf because they have a good balance between magic and stamina bonuses and they have a baseline damage bonus. I've been playing, you know, for a while and I'm, I'm fairly comfortable managing my resource pool so I'm not too worried about a recovery bonus. Um, there are also six classes to choose from and let's see here the only one that i don't currently have is necromancer um my main is a sorcerer i have a stamina and magic and templar <clears throat> i have a dragonite i have a night blade that i'm working on and a warden that i'm working on um the most beginner friendly class is probably the Magicka Templar is it's just there's there 
main spammable ability heals you and deals damage. So it's just kind of a beginner friendly, you know, learning curve thing. So, I mean, we can, I'll go through and read these. So Dragonite is one of the classes. Um, skillful masters at arms use the ancient Activiri martial arts tradition of battle spirit and wield fearsome magic that pounds, shatters, and physically alters the world around them. You know what? That's actually too vague um, to really describe what's going on. So I don't think I'm going to get into that just yet. Um, anyhow, as I said, though, I am going to go with the Necro. Uh, I think we're at a good stopping point right now. I don't want to overload information since this is a series for beginners. Um, the next video in this series, I'll go over all the classes, discuss what they do, give some generally preferred recommendations for what roles each is good at. Yes, play your way. I'm not saying don't. They're just, some roles are easier to fill with certain classes than others. And that's, it just is what it is because of the skills that the, that the classes have. Because in this game, each class has its own class skills. You have three skill trees for every class. Some are inherently built seemingly to be like Dragonites built for tanking. They are, yes, you can do an insane amount of damage with them, but they are also probably the best tanks in the game. <clears throat> but, anyhow. So, once I've, in the, after the next video, that way, after the next video and I've covered all the classes, yeah, that'd be a good, you'll have a good starting point if you have an idea of what type of role you want to play in group content. If you decide to do that, I'm going to say it's going to be real hard to avoid since most of the better gear in the game comes from group content. Anyhow, if you, that's all I have. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and share. Um, go ahead and subscribe to the channel while you're at it. And make sure to, to turn the no notifications on by clicking the bell icon. Um, we release content two to three videos a week. Uh, I mean, we're trying to ramp that up. So um, before I go, I do want to mention that you can get a Spy Pie Gaming t-shirt to show support for the channel, which I will put the link for in the corner of the video and also down in the, just in the description below. Um, you can also click the button below our videos that says thanks and make a donation that way. Every little bit counts and it helps Spy and myself continue delivering content to our audience. Um, anyhow, I appreciate y'all watching and we'll see you in the next video.